gay who didn't put forth a great effort. So these are great opportunities. Also working as a team. So a lot of times teamwork is important what you do. So when you work on a project, the project leads, it gives them plenty of money time to work that project, follow instructions, and make a contribution. And at the end of the year, they do, I mean, I was right in terms of rewarding those best out, the ones that did the best job showed the most leadership, got rewarded. And that's real life stuff. You don't get promoted. So they understood early on, and some were saying, well, I wish I could got that bag, I got that. Well, you didn't put the work in. Those other scholars did. Flexibility. Uh, I you talked about it. Flexibility is a great thing about this partnership. Uh, we really did want scholars to be here today, but because of the MCA testing, just not possible. Impossible in coming to our building during that. We say lockdown, we really are on lockdown. But we have to have flexibility, so all that flexibility is now. It's been here. We're here in my only want visitors coming to the South Building. We're coming in, at least sharing a little bit with you about our goal. Our goal is to move our educators, our staff, and we say everything from the janitor. On up on board. We knew two years ago when one of our dads said to me and Mr. Mock Moon, we're going to do really well on testing this year. A janitor told us, he said, the styles are really focused. So our janitors even know it. they play a major role in our building being clean, being safe, all that. So it's a team effort. You know, we often see Mr. Mock or somebody else being out front. Very, very important. Way more important than administrative staff. But again, we couldn't have this partnership without the great flexibility of the Bible Science folks. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, what does Boston Scientific do to develop these partnerships? So about six years ago, you, oh by the way, in that big picture there is Stacy Bowlebeely, <laughs> who's going to be here today. So I want to make sure she got a lot of credit for all the great work she does with this partnership. So Boston Scientific had a lot of employees like myself who do a lot with STEM education, either in schools or with school districts or with other organizations like Girl Scouts. And Marilee Grant pulled together a number of these employees and said, Collaborate. Decide what we can do together. And what's best to do. What's best for Boston Scientific to do. And how can we become part of our community in a way that's meaning meaningful beyond just awarding grant dollars to programs. So about, I think it was six years ago, we formed, I don't even know what the count is up to, the STEM Council. And we had a right Now on the council, hey, hey, when a sterilization chamber goes down, and we have a chair, and we have two coordinators for either. one can take the lead, and then the co-coordinator the next year or the following year after that can become the lead, and get another employee and involved, and have them have an excellent, quite frankly. Events, we have external events like the big ones like Girls in Science, the Science Museum, we're all familiar with that in October. And we have a resource team and a communication team. Infrastructure that allow these coordinators for other program areas to be really effective. So those are very key teams to cite. The resource team work with the bottom to put together our heart one-on-one -on -one kit. And to classrooms, 
And so those are innovation kit. So the school partnerships right now and we're growing. Um, we focus on elementary and middle and junior high levels. Why? Because all of the STEM education and research by people who actually know it is us who are subject matter educator experts uh, tell us that fifth and kids versus sixth grade and especially for girls, we need engaged and interested before they make the transition to that middle school building. For that junior high building. And this building transition that really plays a big role, especially for grade, uh, where they're at in math and where they're at in their science curriculum determines the rest of the coursework they can take. So we want to capture those students before they get to 8th or ninth grade so that we can get them already taking those courses that allow them to go beyond and take advanced courses such as AP courses or PSEO courses once they get to high school. We have a budget. Calendar year. Today. So that's a little difficult, but we work through that. And uh, we have, uh, of course, the ability to be flexible. And there's a list of some other examples of programs at other schools. Um, so when we go to um, start a program, one of the things that we have to make sure we have before we commit is uh, good volunteers. So Tunak, who was a mentor in year one, uh, one of our most dedicated volunteers who came the most times in our first year. Uh, we have to seek very specific, but it's really, really critical. Uh, the same woman here, deepest people. So, for example, when we run a session on a work session with students on brainstorming, we got an industrial engineer. What's the difference? Who invented this? Rachel, who was able to come in and do an example of what is the difference between brainstorming something and brainstorming a business technique. And she had an activity for your student, a way that's not works, to say, let's plan a winter party for your school. Now that tends to work well, and I want you to feel the difference. Then we broke up into the student project teams and did brainstorming for questions about their three topics. So it's important to have just the right volunteer. And of course, uh, it's, just, it's really important to provide a thank you to their manager with specific constructive comments about uh, We know that that employee is going to be more likely to say yes because they're going to get recognized for it in their next review. Um, so we had track employee hours and numbers of students impacted. Lisa Stone and community relations tracks all of that information. And we also make sure that in the car, on the way back to work, we do a little lessons learned exercise. We carpool not just because we should, but because it enables this lessons learned exercise. How did today go? Oh, the kids are really squirrely today. What do next time to help make that. So Stacy cannot be here today, but um, I need to give her a lot of credit because Stacy works with uh, student project plans. And here's one of the student project teams from year one. And by the way, Mr. Meek Stalin on the left was one of the students who received an outstanding project team member award last year. So Stacy put together a project summary schedule and plan. We have tentative dates. We need in the beginning of the school year to set up tentative dates for the first semester. And then again, the 
Um, adapting to a school environment. I, I just have to be really frank and honest with you guys. We're subject matter experts. We come from this very environment where engineering is, is prevalent. And, and we're used to being able to run experiments and characterize something. And we're used to having that characterization data enable us to run a validation or to run, or to run a manufacturing process. And we know it will work. And we're just doing that validation to refine and optimize it. So we can in this very structured environment. And we're subject matter experts, but, but we don't know how to educate students, right? So that's where the partnership is very important. Mr. Twells talked about how, uh, how hard it is sometimes to get kids to focus. And Ms. Mangir is going to mention her perspective on kind of how do we balance giving these students a real life exposure to real life STEM careers because they're pretty structured and they're pretty planned out and sometimes that can be a little boring versus how do you keep seventh graders engaged? How do you get them to settle down and focus? So that's kind of a tension that happens. Um, we've already talked about flexibility. So in the beginning of the year, we have um, introductions to Heart 101 using that kit there. We have um, a Toastmaster come and give an overview of Boston Scientific. Uh, we work with all the established employee groups at Boston Scientific in order to pull volunteers and to get volunteers who are expert in what they do. Later on in May, we're going to have a Toastmaster come and work with the students and teach them how to do public speaking and how to present in a large professional auditorium, which they will do this year on May 29th. I'm going to career speakers here. You can see in the middle um, our Vice President of Post-Market Quality Assurance, Mark Gale, gave a welcome to the students when they came in the fall. And up on the top is an industrial engineer, Mo Satterwhite, who was able to tell kids about his career, his education path, and how he balances life and work. And he's a uh, soccer coach, I believe. And uh, that's really important because we want students to be exposed to real life of the real life of STEM career goals. So they get a facility tour up on the top. You can see Leon, engineering tech. And his team, you can go see admissions in our return products lab. But that's one of our devices. And he is basically um, not just showing students, but allowing them in groups to come in and hook up that device to an oscilloscope and a program fixture that tests the battery voltage of the device. So they actually got some hands-on experience with actual return product testing. Um, we also do brainstorming and research sessions on their topics. And then last year's students are on their tables. And they do a presentation. They literally stand on a corporate stage. It's an auditorium and professional. We get them it's very professional. Uh, and then they provide an hour to provide their actual presentations from the projects, just like our project town teams do at the end of their project. And then they have a pizza lunch. <laughs> and at that pizza lunch, outstanding team members here to pick them up and give the teacher's perspective of what she's seen this year working with students beforehand, they can do distance. Hi, this is Missy, you're from the auditor. And I teach seventh grade life science at Harvest and Sister Perspective Academy. And I actually co-teach of the seventh graders who are doing time. That's eighth grade. So I can have <coughs> eighth grade graders who actually did it last year. And it's been quite interesting, the two perspectives. So, I really think that for the STEM careers in general, they're really um, women and minorities, as you all know, are underrepresented with the STEM careers. And as Heidi said, exposing students very early on in their educational career to different STEM careers and STEM fields is better. It increases the likelihood that they'll do well in science as they go on in their education. It increases the chances of them actually pursuing a career in the STEM area. And it helps them with their testing, standardized tests. 
it increases their economic opportunity because they actually that's better for the economy. I mean, the benefits just go on and on. Why STEM? Um, I'm going to skip to student engagement. Um, uh, here last year to know specifically about that second point. Um, so with student engagement, this year the seventh graders are really enjoying Boston Scientific. You know, it was really nice how we decided where we actually weeded out students, as Mr. Terrell stated. Basically, the students who were most interested and willing to do the work that it required, the students who show, you know, science interview process, you're going to be with them. We actually pick them. You know, your best interest to behave in here. You're going to show us that you want to actually participate in this. And the students who insisted that they didn't want to, they actually got weeded out. So now what we're left with are students who are really invested, they're interested. You know, Heidi actually helped kind of buy them into the concept of Boston Scientific, why what they're learning with Boston Scientific is important, which is what we're doing on a daily basis with teaching them. You know, as a teacher, to actually get them to learn and be interested in their own education, you have to buy them in to their education. You have to show them why do you want to learn about the cell. You know, you can't see it on the, you know, you can't see a cell in your daily life, so why is it important? You know, you have to show them why it's interesting, why it's important, and buy them into their own education and show them that it's benefiting them in the long run. And, you know, there's lots of pros to that. And so, with the eighth graders, I just wanted to say that although I teach seventh grade life science, I co teach eighth grade earth science. So I have some of those same students that were a part of Boston Scientific last year in the eighth grade class and they'll say to me, Miss me here, why can't we be in Boston Scientific this year? You know, it's not fair. You know, so Tiffany, she expressed her, you know, dissatisfaction that she couldn't be a part of it this year. I'm like, well it's just for seventh grade. You all had your chance last year, now it's, you know, the seventh grade greatest term. So I think that just speaks to the fact that she enjoyed the program, she bought into it, and it was a really rich experience for her. Students are really connecting to the program, I feel, and they are looking forward to, you know, the, the finale where they get to actually present their research to, you know, their group of friends and family and, and whoever else gets invited to the, the final um, program. And so I really feel like they, they feel special that they're a part of the program. And um, because again, they will, you know, on any topic that I discuss with them. The girls, however, I have to kind of, you know, pull it out of them a little, a little bit. And, but I really always try to make it interesting and to show them different this year. Aspects of science to inspire science that maybe they never them to encourage them to motivate them with science. And I feel like Boston Scientific is actually helping with that vision that I even had for them. And so I'm thankful that they have been able to participate in this. It's been a great experience. So um, you can see on your tables are examples of the brochures from last year. And the students had three different topics, and they were split up into teams. And one of those topics was related to um, well, what marketing does uh, for our devices. And we had these students basically create by kids for kids brochures on these topics. So they 
they have been asking themselves, what do we put in our brochure that my fourth or fifth grade sibling or cousin would want to know? So in marketing, we do a lot of work to, to help our patients understand what their implant procedure is going to be like and what that change to living with a device is going to be like. So uh, we have one topic of what happens when I get a device implanted. We also have a return products area that you saw Leon Smith um, demonstrating and having kids test a battery voltage on a device. And so what happens to my and it gets sent back to Boston Scientific and I get a new one with a new battery. So that's another topic. A third topic is uh, how do I manufacture? So last year we got a really great variety in the brochures that were produced because the students learned how to do what a flowchart is about, how we use it in business, and they created their own for their own topic. And uh, this year I'm really thrilled because um, I've been working with uh, Susan Brethren in our Innovation Center. We have an Innovation Center in both Arden Hills and Maple Grove campuses. And Susan in marketing is going to be working on a display for each of those Innovation Centers where we have physicians and researchers uh, visit campus and meet with, uh, start their day meeting with our leadership for breakfast. And, uh, students. Give them another idea of real life use of STEM topics. And then we already mentioned the presentations that they do. Uh, this year will be on May 29th. We invite um, all of the volunteers from this year, from last year, there, and we invite their co workers and those three, everyone on our technical areas, manufacturing advisory committee and this year at our technology fest, which is kind of like a, a poster and abstract session, but internal to the company. Um, the staff council three committee members will be uh, and I'm going to have the opportunity that it is well to talk about oh, and to recruit volunteers. And uh, then we also, one of the things that's best is that we also get the opportunity every once in a while to do some specific mentoring. So this year, Mr. Oswald Reed, who's a seventh grader, indicated that he was really interested in chemistry. And he let us know that, um, Stacy and myself, after one of the work sessions that we had with, this, with all the students. And, and he pulled us aside and said, I'm really interested in chemistry. Mm -hmm. So when the students, all the students from seventh grade came in the fall, we found a chemist in a lab over in our R&D building, Mr. Mike Smith, and he was able to take Mr. Oswald Reed on a personal tour of his lab and to show him some of the projects that he was working on. So if we've got students, so those are the student project deliverables that we have. I'm really happy to say this year we're going to actually be able to use them in business. The heart bent it up and bent and everything from the heart picking up the sound and the ear hearing and actually biting you off biting you off the farm. 
<laughs> so our returns lab, Mr. Leon Smith and, uh, and Carolyn Christensen, um, they set up this great quiz at the end of the tour for the sorts of weird product returns that we get, and only one of them is fake. And they have to guess which one. And usually they guess the horse story. <laughs> and, but that was real. <laughs> is, the, is the experience that you're involved through they're having, is this kind of a lot of times the first experience that they're having? Or is this something that they've come through, like a program or something? It's a fairly involved target our volunteer recruitment for this program. Yeah. Um, so when we had a session on. Research and how do you research those those questions that you brainstormed last month when we were here? We librarian from our biomedical library, and she of course had a subject matter expertise, and so um, it was very specific recruitment and. So we also try to make. Um, very specific opportunities that are short and time limited and specific for their first experience. So that be a difficult. So we definitely have the time. I just wonder. I will tell you that we have the massive um, time commitment infrastructure that the all the structure built. That if we have coordinators, support structures are there for it. So we're willing, to, and we have a standard project to do project plan that we've. That this amount of um, intense, quite frankly. So I, I would like to say that it really starts at the top. I think do a fantastic job of really being involved. Um, so I mentioned Randy, she's still, he's actually working with a program um, that he's the works, uh, the Camp Innovation for the summer. Uh, the Bakken, thank you. Um, working with the Bakken Museum and um, having a, a, an on-site camp for him. these um, students. And so he is super invested to the point that he is actually um, coordinating some of the sessions himself. I know. Always being gone to volunteer during the day, but we also have opportunities on Saturdays or evenings as well. Um, so that happens, for example, in Minneapolis, sometimes into evening hours, and the STEM Expo. We also have a career, uh, for example, science fairs um, and robotics competitions and such, where 
those are our outside work hours. So I think there are ways to work around whether or not an employee has that kind of flexibility or not. Um, but it's really a Yes, so we have um, kind of a menu of offerings of things that we do for internal events, for external events, and for partnerships. So um, there's a, a process and I think you hooked up with the right people. Just a comment. Um, even looking at it as an example, I think sometimes uh, <coughs> you don't think about the differences in your community as the partners that you're creating. So I didn't have to do be just us, but if you look in, in your communities and work they're giving or down the road, a lot of people are interested in giving their time and giving them any opinion for your discussion or talking about doing a tour at their location. So even just thinking of that as a um, and, a bit about these two. and the second thing I have to say is that we do have six school partners, um, and each school is different. Each school needs something different because what their goals and their two budget needs and what our core competencies are. Um, I, I'm following up on what Marilee said, in the Stillwater School District, um, I was meeting with um, a couple of school board members on a, a different topic, but we had some extra time. So of course we turned to STEM. And <laughs> um, Mike Patachek, who's a board member, and Natalie Fetty, who's a board member, um, were very interested in talking about further partnerships with local businesses. And so there was a business about a year ago that moved into the UFI building, and it's called Vistatech. And they are a quick uh, prototyping and injection molding company, and they also have had past experience with 3D printing and 3D um, prototyping. And so uh, part of the, their move to Stillwater was to um, look at working with the school district and sharing their employees' expertise with the school district. Um, another thing that I think is really important about thinking local is that in Stillwater, we have the Stillwater Bridge being built. And uh, going across from Highway 36 over to um, Somerset. And um, that's a huge project. Um, and so we've got civil engineers from that project that are coming into the, um, the programs in the high school, the school, the courses that are appropriate. And there's one teacher who's coordinating that partnership. And so students from Stillwater are actually going out to the bridge site and working with civil engineers on that project. So it's not just businesses. It's also, what else is going on in your community? Um, so there are a plethora of opportunities to partner. And uh, um, Stillwater is doing part of that themselves. And so I can connect them to each other. Kind of get them started. So. Um, uh, on the bridge project. Yeah, we partnered with uh, Boston Scientific and City of Brooklyn Park. And, uh, Dream and the Box is a work. And we're doing building an outdoor classroom to extend the city's extended bike path instead of designing an outdoor classroom. Lab station type areas out there and stuff. Yeah. It's going to be positive for both the engineers and the bike and stuff, and yeah. surveying and all that kind of stuff. We also partner with Boston Scientific. Scientific is our new up there. We do a uh, brown bag lunch twice a month. Uh, we bring in speakers from Boston Scientific. They do a seventh grade session during lunch and eighth grade session during lunch with like 35, 40 kids. And stuff. They do different activities and they get to work one on one with that person. It's been real positive thing that for three years now. And I work by connection at Boston Scientific. Marilyn has a, a person that I work, uh, Tony, we meet at least try to meet once a month so I can kind of plan out you know, where, where we're going and stuff like that. So it's been real positive for us.
some of the experience that a lot of process activities had to kind of learn. They've been very generous with the information about how they put their council together because we think that's kind of a nice first step to get employees involved and then also find some ways to <laughs> just give them some good best practice. I mean, obviously, the big thing that you keep saying is flexibility and <laughs> culture. I mean, people forget about that because most of us working in business or work in business forget what school is like and you remember it from sitting in the chair and that just kind of gets you more messed up as to what we are going to be able to accomplish. So we're still working on that. Hopefully we'd have something. We'll see. We're working on some stuff right now. So hopefully we can have that maybe by next fall. But I yes. A program called Define STEM. And so you can look it up at definestem.com. And from what I've seen so far, it's amazing. I almost wanted to like quit my job and run out this company. <laughs> because all they do is travel the nation and the world and go to companies like Boston Scientific and figure out what you do there and they get all their interviews and and everything else, and then they design units, done units around that for students. The literacy teacher could be using it, the social studies teacher, the math teacher, the science teacher, everybody can connect to one project. But kids get to learn about all these other different career paths that are out there, and while, while gaining a better STEM. menu of offerings is that we need to start small and then build the infrastructure and standardize things. A partnership like this with as much as we not have been possible in year one or year two of the STEM Council. It's just there's no way we didn't have those infrastructure pieces in place. I don't know if we had a separate account number for budgeting back then. I don't think we did. And we have a lot of infrastructure that allows this type of more intensive partnership to exist. So I think the key that we've learned is always start small. And uh, when you think you bit off more than you can chew, don't beat yourself up about it. Just kind of figure out what to do next and how to um, reduce, minimize, and focus. And um, so that's, uh, from a corporate perspective, what we've learned the most. Any other questions about students? I'm just really disappointed that Tiffany couldn't be here today. And, and uh, Meek Stalin photos. He came to the seventh grade first session this year and talked about his experience the previous year. And he's a very accomplished speaker, I have to say. And he, he did a terrific job of uh, encouraging this year's to uh, be interested in it and trying to, to get on the project teams. And that whittling down happens about mid-year. So this, all of the seventh graders get those uh, sessions in the fall, and that whittling down happens in the spring. Mm -hmm. so. All right, well, thank you so much for attending. I appreciate it.